Hello and welcome to another VS Software tutorial. In this tutorial, we finally get to use Xcode 5 and iOS 7. I am very excited about this because Xcode 5 has basically been redone from Xcode 4, although you probably won't realize it, but it's finally using Arc itself. I know it's a complete shock, but uh, Xcode 4 didn't. Now Xcode 5 does. It's much, much better. <coughs> excuse me, a cleaner user interface, it's just awesome. And iOS 7 makes this great opportunity for developers to kind of get into the app store. There's already millions of apps, but the truth is most of these apps never get updated. So if you update your app for iOS 7 only, they're gonna look much better. People are going to want iOS 7 only apps. And Apple is gonna be more likely to put you as like an editor's choice. So today we're going to be building a simple matching game that will teach you how to move objects like a button in iOS. So let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. And we're going to do a single view application. Click next. And then I'm just going to call mine matching game. Make sure devices is set to iPhone and notice that the use automatic reference counting, use storyboard, and use unit tests are all gone. Um, the reason is, is because Apple by default wants you to use these technologies. So if you use one of their templates like we are, which is the single view application, then they're going to set these to true by default. So we are going to have unit tests, we are going to be using storyboards, and we are going to be using Arc. If you wanted to not use any of those technologies, you would have to make an empty project and then build your project from there. But this is much simpler. So we're just going to click Next. And now it's going to ask you for where you'd like your project to live. I'm just going to put mine on the desktop and click Create. All right, so the first thing we have to do is add our user interface. So we're going to go to the main storyboard, uh, storyboard. And then we're going to add 10 buttons. So we're just going to grab a button and drag it up here. And I'm just going to name it one. And then two, three, four, and five. All right, so now we need to center these. So I'm just going to select them all and then use the blue guidelines to center them. There we go. And now if you hold the option key with all these still selected and then click it, you can drag down a copied version of them, which is a nice little cheat. And then I'm just going to put it right here in the middle. OK, so now I'm going to move these buttons around. I want the four over here. And I want the one in the middle. And I want the three next to the five. OK, so now we're going to connect our user interface to our code. So we're going to open the assistant editor. And I'm just going to lower a part of my screen because my screen's kind of small. OK, so now if we select the first button here, we're going to control drag. OK, so this happened to me last time. Uh, for some reason, it brings me to the implementation file instead of the header file. So right here, select this and go to the header file. OK, so in here is where we're going to have our actions and stuff. So we're going to come here from our button. We're going to control drag to in between the add interface and the end. And we're going to change our connection to action. And we're going to call this one button one. And then we're just going to do that for the rest of these. Button two.
button three. Button four. Button five. Okay, so now we have these buttons. And these buttons don't need to be actions because we're not actually going to be clicking them. These are the buttons that are going to move. So this one's going to move right here. Um, so we're going to create outlets for these. So we're going to control drag from this four. And we're just going to put it here. We're going to leave the connection as outlet. And we're going to say button for moved. And we're going to do this for all these. Button two moved. Button one moved. Button three moved. And button five moved. Okay, so now that we have all of that done, we're going to go into our implementation file and we're going to add the code that will actually move our buttons. So we're going to close the assistant editor and go into our standard editor. And then I'm going to bring back the left side of my screen. Um, then we're going to come here to the implementation file or the .m file. And you notice Xcode was kind enough to build us some method stubs. So we're going to come here to button one and we're going to say CG rect and I'm just going to call it frame. And then I'm going to say our button one outlet dot frame. And then we're going to say frame dot origin dot x equals 72. Frame dot origin dot y equals 58. And then we're going to say square bracket UI view begin animations. We're going to say nil and then context. We also want nail. Okay, and then we're going to say UI view set animation duration to half a second, so point or 0 0.5. And then we're going to say button one moved dot frame equals frame. Finally, UI view commit animations oops okay so let me walk you through this code so the cg rect frame equals underscore button one moved dot frame so what this does is it creates a cg rect object that holds the frame of our button so this is the frame of our button and we just stuck it in a new frame so then we say frame.origin.x equals 72 so these coordinates the x and y coordinates are where we want our button to be moved. This is where the new frame is going to be for our button. Then we say begin animations. We're not doing any fancy animations, so we set this to nil. And then we want the duration, so this is how long we want this animation to last, and this is in seconds, so we want it to last for half a second, so 0 0.5. Then we set this new frame, which has the coordinates of where we want our button to be, and then we set that to our button frame. And then we just say perform the animation. So you might be wondering, how did I know that the X was going to be 72 and the Y was going to be 58? So if we go back into our storyboard file, and then we select the one here, and let me bring up the right side of my screen. So then we select this one. We're going to drag it right here. Oh, and you notice how this is different now? This is 69 and 58. So I was actually wrong. So if you come here, this is the size inspector. We have the X value and our Y value. So the Y value for all these are going to be the same. What's going to change is our X value. So we have 69. So if we go back here to our implementation file, we're going to change this to 69. 
or whatever you want. I'm actually just going to leave it as 72. Um, and then you can see what happens. But you can actually just move this wherever. So once we press button one, we can move this like here. And then um, your X and Y values are right there. So I'm just going to move this back. And I've already written down all of the X and Y coordinates. So I'm just going to save time and put them in. But now you know where you can go and you could move your buttons wherever you want them to go. So I'm just going to copy this code and paste it for each one. So here for button two, we got to change our outlet to say button two moved and right here button to move. Don't forget to do that. That's very, very important. So for our X, we're going to say 107. And here for button 3, we're going to change this outlet to button 3 moved, button 3 moved, and we're going to change the X coordinates to 145. Then here we're going to change our outlet to button four moved, button four moved. And we're going to change our X values to 183. And now here, we're going to be changing the button five to button five moved and button five moved. All right, so now we're going to change our X value to 221. All right, so now we're done. All we have to do is build and run our project and we should have a working matching game that moves UI elements like buttons across the screen. So if we come here and we select one, our button one moves. We select two, button two moves, three, four, Five, and so on. So there you go. You now have a working, simple matching game. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to check out viasoftware.com.